So we are in downtown Las Vegas, Container Park. And uh, man, I've been meaning to do this interview for a minute because me and this guy, we've been on the road for the past couple of months and we, we just keep running into each other. It's one of those things where I'll be in an airport or I'll be in a coffee shop and I'll be looking at my phone and I'll look up and Fabiano Busque is standing right in front of me. Hey, so the people have been saying they're calling you the goat. The goat of, what is it? Is it a, do, do you prefer to be called an interpreter or a translator? That's not my bad, it's translator. That's why I got hired for it. But I do appreciate the, the interpreter thing because I, I understand why people have said that. It's because they feel that I was able to convey the emotions and um, the, the, not just the message, but the, the mannerisms and how, they, how the fighters behave. So it's pretty good. I do understand that the reason why people say interpreter is, is for for a very good point. So I, I do appreciate it. But now, as far as the goat is concerned, I mean, a lot of people do this in much more serious situations. And I do have to shout out to the people that did this before or for a long time. Um, when I got called for this, I watched videos. I inquired with people. I tried to look for what Derek Crony did. The Derek, Derek, who's translated for 10 years in the UFC, also Alex Davis, who still does it sometimes, and all the other translators, no matter what the language is, no matter what was the situation, just they set the presence. So you look at it as like, oh, how does this man position himself um, in the arena? Uh, how does he work into the octagon? How, how does it work? Uh, it's nerve wracking the first time you do it, I have to tell you. It's, it's, uh, but I do appreciate it. I do, I, when I hear that, it's like, I'm flattered. It's still surreal. To me, it's still surreal. So for the people that don't know, Fabiano is a translator for the UFC. He does a lot of the Brazilian fighters. He mainly deals with Portuguese, but he also does Spanish translation as well, right? People didn't know that originally. We were at a, I think we were at a weigh-in in maybe Texas or San Diego, and all of a sudden you started doing the Spanish translations as well. So tell me like where this whole thing started. Like when did you just decide, okay, I'm going to get into this profession and then how did it transition into the UFC? Um, I come from the corporate world. Um, languages are always the thing that I've liked. I think as a sign of respect, is my sign of respect, is my sign of trying to understand a culture, try to blend in. I love being a local somewhere else. <laughs> so um, I was born and raised in southern Brazil. A lot of us are European. I'm half Brazilian, half Italian. Um, but the, well, English was the second, my second language. And because of football, I fell in love with football when I was a child, um, and I just couldn't go back. Uh, just football is a, is a problem. It's uh, football season's around the corner, so American football. Yes, 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 it is. Um, and I, I, you cannot fully understand football if you don't delve into English to the, I mean, to the nucleus, the core of English. I always tell people: find a passion. Is it music? Is it? Uh, books? Is it an author? Is it a subject that, you know, the, the people that produce content for it are from this culture or this country? Go for that. And mine was football. Came to the United States and eventually ended up going to Florida. Long story short, what's Florida's official language? It's Spanish. Um, a fun fact, when I learned Spanish, and I'm a little older than most of you guys, it was about 20 years ago, and I spoke like a Puerto Rican. My friends were from Puerto Rico. I was a member of the Puerto Rican Student Association in college. I went to Penn State. And I had that accent. Like, it was it. Like, I spoke like it. I fell home. I went to Puerto Rico many times. And I eventually had to go to South America. And when I was there, just for business, it was, it was easy to speak another kind of, with another kind of accent. And that I'd become an Argentinian. Now I sound like Santiago Ponzinibbio. So I know, I just, because when, it's, when your language, your language is one, you have a mother tongue. All others are, you have an option, you have a, you have a clean slate. You can be whoever you want. You end up being the person that you, um, maybe you're an exchange program, maybe the friends that you have, maybe the country, the, the, the second country that you live in, the third country we live in, and you pick your spots. I was able to pick some accents, it was, it was pretty cool, so I got into that. Um, always, always worked with it for corporate translations. Always, uh, I worked for the Walt Disney Company. So working at Disney, I was a cast member many times over. 
uh, working with international tour groups in Portuguese and Spanish down there. You know how many, let me get for any of you that have been to Walt Disney World during the summer, it's a party of Latin American groups. So I dealt with them. Um, I work for General Motors, I work for DuPont, I've done a lot of different things and always involved with the language, language content, developing, translating in workshops. And when I realized I could do it in public, I was like, okay, I can translate. And uh, some people knew that I had done that in the past. Um, they met when I, was, when I was doing editing and translating specifically, because I do literally translations as well. And I was here in Las Vegas, I said, hey, listen, this is a gig, you have a full-time job, can you show up on Saturday? I mean, they need a local person. Because of everything that we went through, they weren't, people weren't able to travel, the UFC wasn't traveling, so they needed a guy in Las Vegas. So they tried some people out, they asked me to come in, and it was two years ago. And uh, I showed up, and I always, I never knew if they were going to call me back. I, did, I didn't know if um, I did a good enough job. And they kept being, they're patient, uh, they like to coach you, they want to help you out, they want you to succeed. And two years later, here I am. So what is that, I mean, what is that first experience like? And what is it like being in front of the best fighters on the planet? Because you and I had this discussion, I think it was last week, when uh, I was standing there interviewing Charles Oliveira. And afterward, like it didn't hit me at the time, but after I finished that interview, I went, holy shit, you know? Because certain fighters just have that presence. Charles was standing there, he was massive, absolutely massive. He was decked out in his chains and his Versace. And uh, it was, I'm not gonna lie, it was a very intimidating interview for myself. So for you, I'm wondering, what is that like for you being like, man, I really got to get this right and I really got to try and display the emotions that these guys want to get out there with what they're saying. Um, to your point, Charles, um, it was, I'm going to say 264, when Poirier was fighting McGregor. So the producers get in my ear and say, Charles is here, he's in the other side of the octagon where the VIPs are. Um, and you're gonna follow, there's going to be a producer, Jimmy came over, uh, he's always there, um, with uh, Megan O'Leary. said, you guys are going to walk to the other side, and whatever happens in this fight, you, we understand that this, this is next up, so we're going to interview Charles. This is the first time I met Charles Oliveira live and in person. Well, he had the shades, he had the coat, he had the belt, the belt with him, I mean, talk about intimidating. And then the fact that Boyer was still doing this thing up there. McGregor's yelling. McGregor's saying, you know, this is no fucking over. Like, you know, the whole wife in the DMs thing. And I'm hearing, I'm laughing, and I'm going over there. And it's live on ESPN, and Megan O'Leary's asking the questions. First time I had the pleasure of working with her. And the smile, like, she, obviously I knew how she was i've seen her so many times but then charles she asked the question charles looks at me and the smile man million dollar smile and there's a presence to it and he answers you assertively he looks into your eyes and he just smiles and he's very he was very well spoken he's very we know how he is very poignant like he's just straight to the point and then i have to translate and then all those people are around so i've seen the aura and I realized what it was. As for their emotions, I've seen them cry. I've seen them vent. I've seen them, uh, and I think Contender Series is something that just amazes me because I get to see their first time, their pre-first time. They don't know if they're going to make it. Um, they're coming from a fight that started way before the Octagon. And it's... Uh, it's a, a dichotomy. They come in and you think, well, this is the end of a journey. And yet, it's not just a destination. This is the beginning of something. So you get to see a lot. And I just think they, they deserved it. I just like incorporate it. I do by osmosis because of the languages and the culture. I tend to, to I'm from public relations originally. Mm -hmm. And when you're in Walt Disney World, like you're working with people, there's a lot of techniques to actually talk to people. You know, approach them, do the same kind of gestures, that, that kind of stuff, and you start mimicking people. Uh, it's good for accents as well. So I started doing that and I realized, whoa, there's a lot going on here. Like they, they respond 
they respond. Uh, we're bridges, right? We're just, I'm here to, con I'm, con to, I'm conveying their message as much as I'm conveying the message from the interviewer. So it's just, it's just a very interesting thing. Uh, I think Sanko mentioned a couple weeks ago, I was like, I almost wanted to console you because like, you were like, you're talking. I was like, what up with, no, don't cry. <laughs> because it was the fighter. So uh, it's just, uh, it's, uh, it's insane. The fact that you're actually, you live the emotions as well for that, those brief moments, if I can connect people to them and if they feel connected to them because of what I was doing, job done, right? What is it like for you to see the response that you've been getting? Because you, like I said, you're blowing up on, on the Reddit threads. You know, anytime I see a post fight interview with a Brazilian fighter, you go to the comment sections and it's, this guy's the, the best translator ever. This guy's the goat. Um, and sometimes I even see like with the Charles Oliveira, uh, the quote that he says the champ has a name and people will be like the champ has a name and his name is Fabiano Busque right so what is that like to get that kind of response from a community that's very very careful almost police like in the way that they let people into their community you know what I mean I feel welcomed um, as much as I said that learning a language means to try to get into a culture, a community, uh, well, the, uh, an entire country, uh, families, uh, different environments, I feel welcomed. Um, it, it means I've been doing something right and I am very, uh, it's, it, it's surreal because that's not something I expected. It's something that happened again the past two years of my life in a time that everything was so confusing. So all of a sudden, meanwhile, I'm going through this entire experience. Every, everyone's been so nice. The positivity that people send is amazing. It's contagious. I mean, the fact that some of you take the time to find me, because I wasn't on social media, to inquire about me, to send a message and a message of positivity saying that whatever you know whatever you want to whatever you think i did right was it because you connected to a, one fighter because it was a particular interview that you thought it was cool because you you uh, you had been enjoying foreign fighters that perhaps before you weren't connecting with because you never seen them speak or or because of what happened with charles that that, that moment was because of what happened in phoenix right I'm about to get there, I hop on the flight, and I'm checking out the, like, I thought there wasn't going to be a problem, and all of a sudden, I'm like, okay, so why is this, the flight was delayed, I'm going to Phoenix, I'm like, hold up a second, the wait, the wait, the wait, when I get to Phoenix, they looked at me like, oh, we're going to need you, and then that was the interview, the interview with Megan was the first time that he spoke publicly after what happened, so... For a couple of weeks, everywhere that I went and people recognized me like, hey, the champion has a name, it's Charles Oliveira. So I, I mean, it's a fun, I, I, it's surreal. Um, it's, it's insane. It's, I, I did never, I never, surprising, never expected it, but I feel welcomed. And I can't thank you guys enough. Uh, everyone has been positive because it just makes me want to do my job and continue to do this. It's already a pleasure and a privilege to do it. Imagine what people being positive and praising you, right? What do you think about the Christopher Nolan comparisons? So, I should pitch that. I was like, hey, you know, Christopher, would you like me to be in a movie that can be you directing, you are being directed by you, we can do like a whole, what about if it look like, like a weird trend, translate inception kind of situation? I don't know, I don't know, man, but hey, I the first time I saw it, I was like, yep, I know. I kind of, I need to do some of my hair. I don't know. I, I just, I, I, I thought it was hilarious. People just compare me to him. It was immediate, right? Like it was uh, first comments, first comments. And about comments, you know, when I started, I made that mistake of going to the comments when I, oh, we all do. And I went on a football Sunday morning before the game started, NFL season. Um, hey, let me see what they said. And there were, there were, there was criticism there true criticism granted um and it kind of puts you down but you understand that okay what can i do for this not to happen again and to if the, this is the perception that people had so um again speaks to the coaching of people of the ufc i mean i hear the producer say match that emotion everybody's the people that work 
behind the scenes, meaning outside of the octagon, are just as special as those who put on a show. We, you know this, John. You like you're there all the time. Isn't it amazing? Like everybody's working behind it, known each other for years, and they welcome the uh, us um, that have been there for a shorter period of time, and all of a sudden become regulars because we're like in an overdose. Like we're seeing each other in airports, we're seeing each other around here, we see each other in Vegas. And to your point about emulating emotions, I uh, have story. Uh, Charles uh, uh, was called up to talk to Dana after just, you know, as, as many fighters do, in a special moment sure. in Phoenix. And uh, about the matching the emotion, that was, I think, the pinnacle of matching emotions. So Charles, very intense. Yeah. What a moment. Everything he went through, and then he goes out there and proves his point. Yeah. Great crowd. He's, he's getting that. I mean, you, you, if you're not from here, plus you're playing on the road here, because it was like it's gauges. So it's like, it's right, he's in Arizona. So it's, it was awesome. So it was good for everybody. Um, and then they took, they take him to Dana. I go with him to translate. It's quick, just you know, you know, just a, a praise, and just you know, well, the organization is happy to have him. And uh, when Charles speaks, and he goes like this, and then he, and what does the translator do? <laughs> so I stuck my finger briefly, three taps on Dana White's chest so hey they said match that emotion man i did sorry did you get any heat from that did you get any kickback no because it wasn't at first it wasn't aggressive it was like i was you know but it's interesting because um that's what makes me happy about what i'm doing i guess it feels natural because it was just he did it i did it you know it flows you want it to flow you're there as just as i said like a i don't know a a means to a message, an emissary of emotion, a, a vessel to a voice. You're there to help, right? You're just you're there to make sure that people understand each other and that they get there's a bridge and there's a connection. So, I guess I did. But that involved. I mean, hey, he did it, so I did it too. So, my man, Fabiano Busque, Chris, aka Christopher Nolan. Before we get out of here, my man, take us out. You know what I mean? Give us an outro. Anything you want to say on this mic, floor is yours, buddy. Um, again, first of all, thank you. Thank you for the positivity. Thank you for the praise. Thank you for the patience. Um, the MMA community has been amazing. It's great to be a part of it. It's a pleasure. It's a privilege to be a part of it. Thank you for all throughout for what you guys see and what you don't see. Um, welcome, right? Because we've been at this for quite some time um hope we don't get tired of each other and obrigado gracias grazie mille thank you so much it's been a pleasure guys og will full send mma make sure you like comment subscribe as always we're bringing you the freshest the dopest the newest content stuff that you don't get to see you know what i mean hit that subscribe button i'm the og that's the goat that goat, Fabiano Busque. I'm gonna stand up for this one. And I'll give you a handshake, my brother. Yes, sir. This is my brother right here. Live Show in downtown him some Vegas, love. people. Come to downtown Vegas. We out of here. Yo, boys, real quick. I just wanna tell you about the Full Send supplements. I personally take the sleep capsules when I'm on the road, when I need to sleep during a flight. You can go to supplements.co. Use the promo code OG15 and get your supplements. Like I said, I use the sleep capsules when I'm on the road and I need a rest. Let's go, boys.